What up, what up, what up, Stimulus TV fam? My name is Nigel Henderson. It is Sunday. It is 2 o'clock, and you're in my kitchen. You are in the gumbo pot. So uh, welcome to my kitchen. Uh, again, my name is Nigel Henderson. I'm a Los Angeles native. Um, I, run a, I have a company called The Feast LA. We do um, culinary events and catering, and I'm also a private chef. I teach uh, culinary classes at a school called the Gourmandie School in Santa Monica, California. And I also host a podcast called The Gumbo Pot Podcast. So make sure you check those out. Um, if you're froggish, go to YouTube and follow us at The Gumbo Pot TV. Um, and you can see all of our episodes. You can also see uh, recaps of a lot of the dishes that we're going to be cooking on Sunday. So, And what is today? Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, this menu today is actually inspired by my mother. Uh, I asked her what she would love for me to cook today. And of course, oh, you know, whatever. Well, I had to kind of play around with some things and I came up with this menu. Uh, my, first of all, my mother is my biggest critic ever. When she saw the first video that I did with Stimulus TV, she called me about four or five times and she was just like really going in. And I was like, mom, relax. She said, well, you were sniffing. And I said, well, guess what? There was an onion. I was cutting the onion and there was tears coming from my eyes. So I'm sorry. I love you, mom. Hopefully this meal makes up for it. Uh, and then uh, I'll give you a little bit of details on the meal. So when I first moved back from college, uh, I cooked my mother this blackened salmon with a balsamic dish. And she uh, she was like, damn, what, what is this? You actually know how to cook. Uh, I, I left knowing how to cook, but I came back cooking a lot better. So she was surprised. So um, that was one of the dishes she's always asked me to do. It's one of her favorites. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to kind of zhuzh it up a little bit with blood orange and I made kind of a little spice seasoning. So uh, make sure you uh, pay attention to those details. Uh, second, I'm going to do a roasted red pepper polenta. Uh, polenta is grits. Grits are polenta. Um, this is going to be more of a savory variety of it. We're going to roast it a red pepper, which I'll give you some uh, head, uh, some tips on. Um, we're going to blend up a little red pepper coolie, and we're going to kind of fold that into the polenta uh, and hit it off with some cream, and it's going to be really good, and that's going to kind of be the vessel. And then last but not least, uh, my mother said, oh, I just want roasted veggies. So I'm going to roast a bunch of veggies. I'm going to roast three or four different varieties of veggies. Uh, we're going to do this kind of quick, fast, and in a hurry, uh, but not. Um, if uh, ever you want to find the recipes, you can make sure you check out my website and all of this re these recipes will be on there and even more. So uh, we're going to get ready and knock it out. Um, but before that, got to make sure we toast. Uh, to each and all the mothers out there, from Chef Nigel Henderson, I want to say Happy Mother's Day and I'm going to make sure we get a little cheers. Bow! Ah, rosé on a Sunday, rosé all day. Uh, this rosé is brought to you by Lafitte Rosé. They're one of my event sponsors. Uh, really good rosé, black-owned, um, and very strong. So uh, the summers are, you know, the summer season is coming up. You need a good rosé. You need something to give you a little, uh, little battery. Check it out. All right. I'll be coming back and forth to that because it's pretty good. You guys will tell me um, if I'm uh, talking too much. There we go, Rosé all day, every day. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we got some comments out there. I'm going to be checking on comments here and there. Uh, bear with me because it's kind of hard to check comments and cut at the same time, but we're going to do our best. All right, so first things first, we're going to knock out the roasted vegetables. Um, we're doing the roasted vegetables first because it's uh, obviously we're live. It's going to take a lot more time for the vegetables to cook than say the fish or the polenta. So we're gonna start there. So first things first, uh, I have Japanese sweet potato, which you, hopefully you can see there, but then also is here. So I'm gonna give a quick once over, show you guys how to knock it out. And we're gonna get to roasting. All right, first things first, uh, with roasting, ladies and gentlemen, don't crowd your pan. Um, 
And you never want to start with a cold pan. You always want your pan, not your pan, excuse me, your oven. You never want your oven uh, cold. You never want to just pop something in and say, oh, I'm going to turn it on 350. No, get that, get that oven ripping and roaring. And if you're really froggish, you get that pan hot before you put your vegetables in there and it's going to give a nice extra crust to it, okay? So boom, boom, boom. All right. Potatoes, I just quartered them. I'm going to give them a quick once over. Notice those nice skills. Um, this is a little rustic cut. I'm not, I lost some of that to the, uh, to the side of the counter. I'll clean it up, I promise. <laughs> or I'll leave it and get cussed out later, but you know how that goes. Anyways, back to our potatoes. Oh yeah, these are the ones I cut up already. Again, we're on live TV magic, so I prepped ahead of time. Uh, I did a uh, live cooking demo with a, a good friend of mine, and I taught him how to make lemon pepper wet wings, hot wings with lemon pepper wet sauce. And so I still have some of the lemon pepper oil that I made. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit of that on the potatoes because it can't hurt, you know, that lemon goodness with thyme and all that good stuff. And so now a little bit of salt, a little bit of salt kosher salt. You can go heavy handed with the salt. Um, potatoes like salt and it's nothing worse than having a beautifully roasted potato and then all of a sudden it has no flavor. So make sure you salt. Also, cracked pepper. It's a friend. Not the stuff you get at the grocery store that's already pre-cracked. It's been sitting in the aisle for probably about three or four years. Now I'm talking about the whole peppercorn, invest in a pepper mill, and you crack it. Favorite spices. Um, sorry, I'm checking out the uh, the comments. Favorite spices. I don't have favorite spices. Um, every spice has uh, its own. Um, salt and pepper are really, uh, really, um, really core in all the spices that you use. If you don't have enough salt, um, you won't actually bring out the natural flavors of anything. Uh, if you don't have pepper, you won't have any of that little up. Um, and then pepper, so when we go down the, the spiral of pepper, uh, there's times to put it at the end and at the beginning. And sometimes you don't want to burn the pepper because it makes the food bitter, but we're not going to go there. Uh, but, you know, I like to cook with kosher salt, good cracked pepper, um, fresh ingredients. I grow a lot of my own. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, that's what it is. So, like I said, I salt it the potatoes, salted and peppered them, oiled them, and now they're going on the pan. I'm not looking to crowd them. I'm looking to space it out a little bit, all right? Now, I don't expect you guys to have as many pans as I have. My friends are always laughing at me when I cook. They're like, how many dishes, how many cooking utensils do you have at all? Um, I'm a chef. I have different knife sets. I have <laughs> a ton of ingredients and I'm always experimenting. So uh, there you have it. So another question come up. Someone asked, so maybe flavor palette? Um, I definitely like smoky. I definitely like sweet, uh, sour, salt, and hot and a, and a good balance of it. Uh, my folks are from New Orleans, so definitely spice uh, sticks out a lot for me. Um, but I like everything balanced. Um, I definitely love Asian flavors and how they can balance the uh, the sweets, the salts, the savories, the sours, the pungent umaminess of it. So uh, I know it's kind of the answer's kind of all over the place, but yeah. And yes, gumbo does have a lot of interesting spices, but gumbo is kind of the 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 greatness of everything coming together as a whole. And so that's also why we named it the Gumbo Pot and also the Gumbo Pot Podcast. So, boom, cheers. All right, one time for the rosé. Potatoes are going in. They take a little bit longer, so I'm not worried about those. Popping those in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Brussels sprouts. Uh, growing up, Brussels sprouts were disgusting to me. Um, you know, our parents, bless their hearts, a lot of times they only cook certain things one way. Uh, and for me, 
it was um, boiled. And basically, the shit was cooked out of them. And uh, they were disgusting. Then, as an adult, especially going in uh, into culinary school and obviously work, you know, being around farms and fresh produce and things like that, uh, I learned to love Brussels sprouts. And so um, I'm just going to show you a quick little one-two on how to roast these bad boys up, give them a little bit of flavor, and uh, also get a nice crisp texture. So I've cut these in half. Uh, I'm peeling off the back end of them because they're a little, little old. No judgment. This is what I had in my refrigerator. You know, we're in, a, we're in the middle of a, a, a quarantine, so I don't have the freshest produce. But uh, I got some good stuff. So, needless to say, I'm pulling the leaf of the, the the outer leaf of the Brussels sprouts off. Booyah, booyah, booyah. Sweep this for my compost pile, because yes, I do grow on my balcony. Anyway, so I've had the Brussels sprouts. I've taken out the outer outer leaf. So now we are just going to cut small triangle out of the core, which is what's kind of holding the Brussels sprouts together. And you can kind of just peel this back. This allows more surface area for when you are roasting them and it helps uh, to allow for those leaves to start to open up when you're uh, roasting them. So you can get that nice crispy texture on the outside. You see, booyah. Um, yes, it is tedious. Uh, Yes, it is uh, a little bit OD, but you know I'm a chef. I do like the way the texture is, and you know, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. But again, this is for my mama, so I'm gonna go a little bit past the extra mile. Bro, okay. So, shout outs to the moms again. Uh, I actually got my start cooking in my grandmother's kitchen. Uh, she raised seven kids by herself. Um, she's from New Orleans, Louisiana, and uh, as far back as I can remember, um, she was always cooking, and I was always her taste tester. And I guess she was kind of setting the 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 president for what would be later me being a chef. So, shout out to grandmamas, mama. Anyway, Brussels sprouts. Let's see. All right, we got our Brussels sprouts. We're gonna hit them with a little bit of oil. I'm not gonna go too crazy with my seasoning on the front end of this uh, because I'm gonna drizzle some oyster sauce and a little bit of sesame oil on it later on just to kind of give it a little extra of, and also give it a totally different flavor from the potatoes that we already put in with the uh, lemon pepper thyme oil. All right, so uh, I've done that. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So I'm switching up salts because uh, I forgot to load up my salt and it's all the way across the room. Uh, so I have sea salt. Uh, folks are always asking me what type of sea salt, um, excuse me, what type of salt to use. Um, kosher salt is always good. Sea salt is good, but I like to say you need to know your salts. Uh, some sea salts have a higher salinity than others. Uh, some come from different regions, um, and they're going to give you a different effect. So, uh, you know, some, some things you want to make pay attention to. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got to say about that. I'm going to look back at some of these questions. Ah, thanks for the setup. Thanks for the, you know, thanks someone get, uh, told me that my setup looks nice. Uh, it's, uh, it's come a long way. I'll just say that. You don't see uh, that I have a bunch of cooking equipment and uh, ingredients and experiments that are behind the camera. So I, I appreciate that the kitchen looks good. My girlfriend will, will love that since she says I never clean up the kitchen. All right, all right, all right. I hope that you guys can hear what I have playing in the background. I'm bumping that Erica Badu live. Uh, I saw the Versus Challenge on Instagram. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure you check it out. Oh, my God. Her and Jill Scott last night. That shit was beautiful. And it just brought me back to when I, you know, different time uh, when I was younger. And, woo, Erica Badu and Jill Scott. Damn. Those women put on a beautiful show. So shouts out to them. And so for today, I got to rock with it. Got to rock with it. All right, get back to what I'm doing. 
I'm setting up my Brussels sprouts, salt, pepper, cracked pepper, excuse me, a little bit of uh, oil, nonstick spray. Wow. Brussels sprouts, all right? Now, I have radicchio here. Uh, radicchio has a very bitter flavor. Um, and I kind of, I love roasting it. Uh, it starts to get that little char on, especially if you uh, have a grill, you can grill it. Uh, you can throw it in salad after you, you grill it or put any char on it. And it, it just gives you a total flavor bomb that can contrast them near anything, especially with the greens and, you know, things like that. So uh, I've, as you can see, I've already cut these. Cut, I've cut the whole radicchio in half. And so now I'm just gonna go now. So you guys can see it. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. Medium thickness. Not looking for anything too big or too small. And so I'm gonna take these florets. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Folks, these these crazy times. Uh, I know it's getting a little tedious. I, I, I see on the social media, folks are always talking about how how uh, they're tired of cooking. I'm tired of cooking, but guess what, guys? Uh, we're, we're becoming our healthier selves, hopefully. Uh, so uh, there's that. So I have the Brussels sprouts on one side, the radicchio on another. Boom. I'm going to give it a quick drizzle. And this is just uh, blended oil. It's olive oil and canola oil. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We'll have the recipes up at www.thefeast.la uh, after, obviously, the, the demo. And we'll also have a copy of the demo, too, so we can walk you through some of these steps. So I'm just throwing cracked pepper on the radicchio. I've already um, hit it with a little bit of oil, a little bit of sea salt. This salt is a lot, uh, it has a saltier flavor, so I'm not trying to go too crazy as I would with sea salt, okay? And I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of dried herb. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right, all right, all right. Now that's going to go in the oven. Someone uh, just said, I wish I was a better cook. Cooking, um, I, I, I teach a lot of classes. Uh, I teach a lot of different folks, different types of recipes. Um, one thing that I can say, uh, you can't always rush it. Sometimes you just gotta kinda take your time. Uh, once you learn the technique, um, it becomes a lot easier. Um, recipes are a guide. They're not the end all be all, but they are a guide and one question that I always get, at, get, all my students ask me this question. They're like, when is it done? And when I was in culinary school, I would ask the same question. My chef instructor basically looked at me and said, when it's done. So you gotta be comfortable with uncomfortable and kind of be flexible. And the beauty of cooking is you can kind of balance, you know, you gotta have a quick balance, you know? Like we, uh, we're having a balance today on Mother's Day with this wine and this food. So I hope that helped. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have the potatoes in, we have the Brussels sprouts in, we have the radicchio in, uh, the last root vegetable, uh, excuse me, the last vegetable that we are gonna do is this root vegetable. These are heirloom carrots. And um, heirloom carrots are beautiful. I love them, I love the purple, I love the orange, I love the yellow. The, the, the best thing about the heirloom carrots for me and if you, if you happen to see a purple carrot or a yellow carrot, please grab it. Um, it has totally different flavors than an orange carrot. Not to knock the orange carrot, but 
all these different flavors are, you know, this is, these are what, these are heirloom varieties. Like this is actually what we're used to. Uh, a lot of our um, foodways are, you know, kind of overproduced and people are, you know, only producing things that sell. So hopefully if you guys buy more heirloom carrots, we'll have more varieties of heirloom carrots. I do not have a restaurant in LA. Someone was asking me. I, um, I'm a private chef and I uh, teach culinary classes at uh, the Gourmandise School for Sweet and Savories in Santa Monica. Um, and I would have a beer with you, sir. I want to be kind. <laughs> oh, veggies can be all types of colors. There's a million types. Someone asked or someone stated, yeah, I just realized that uh, veggies come in all colors. Uh, if you've ever had a BLT with an heirloom tomato, uh, it's, it's a different experience than your regular old tomato. Um, one of my uh, cousins was working with me on a catering event, and I had all these different varieties of tomatoes, and I just sprinkled salt and pepper on all of them so he could taste them, and it just, it was amazing to him, like, they had that many different flavor profiles. So, oh yeah, there you go. All right, back to cooking. Carrots, I hit them with cracked pepper, a little bit of oil. Um, gonna throw a little bit, and this is gonna sound weird, but trust me, a little bit of cumin on these carrots, okay? Again, these are vegetables. Give them different flavor profiles. Uh, spruce them up, hit them with a little acid. The sky's the limit. Um, there's no specific recipe for this. I'm just trying to make them taste good, and I, and I know they will. Boom, a little bit of salt. All right. And so with these, with these carrots, a little bit of nonstick again. With these carrots, I'm going to keep them whole because I want them to roast. I want them to caramelize whole. And I like uh, kind of the, the different textures that you get from the different sizes. So you see some are larger, some are smaller. Some are going to be sweeter. Some are going to be a little bit more pungent. It's just different flavor profiles. And that's what we want. And that's why, you know, you can't go wrong with vegetables. You have way more varieties of vegetables than we have protein. So uh, just keep that, in, keep that in your pocket. Thank you. Ah, favorite, someone asked, what was my favorite client that I have worked for? Um, yeah, I like cooking for people equally. Um, my favorite client will be my family, but I've, uh, I've, uh, I've cooked from people like Little Wayne, which was just a crazy experience and dope experience. I cooked for him a couple of times. Uh, I've cooked for the Smith family. That was dope. Um, uh, Issa Rae was pretty dope. She, you know, I've done her birthday party. That was pretty, pretty cool. You know, it was on a boat and all that good stuff. Uh, but you know, I mean, Clients are clients, and I, I like entertaining. I like cooking for people. I like uh, I like producing good food. So, boom. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first part of the dish. That was the roasted veggies. And so we have roasted Brussels sprouts, Japanese sweet potato, radicchio, and heirloom carrots. They're in the oven. The oven is at a 375. Uh, we're going to check on them periodically, but now we're going to go into the next step, which is the red pepper polenta. Um, I do a pop-up series called Rhythm and Brunch. Um, my business partner's name is DJ Trauma. He's uh, Dave Chappelle's tour DJ. Uh, he curates the music. I curate the food. Uh, and one of our crowd favorites is our shrimp and grits. Uh, and everyone always says, yo, your grits are fucking amazing. And all I tell them is just, you got to go low and slow and take your time with them. Uh, my traditional grits have about three, four ingredients. This is going to be kind of a step up from that. So um, I've already roasted off a red pepper. Um, I have it sitting in this in bowl with plastic wrap on it. Um, I'm in an apartment. Unfortunately, I don't have a gas range. I have an electric range. And so I usually roast my red peppers on top of the stove with the fire going. So I had to improvise. I broiled it. Um, and then I covered it with uh, plastic, let it sweat. And so now 
I can actually pull off all of the char and I have the roasted pepper. And so this is going to give extra depth of flavor for the polenta. Um, I also have diced red pepper here. This is gonna actually give you another level of red pepper in your polenta or your grits, okay? So uh, we're gonna get into it. Give me two seconds, give me two seconds. I'm switching my pots, switching my pots. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hopefully you guys can hear that in the background. That's Erica Badu live. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Everyone is thinking about my cousin Vinny. What is a grit? A grit is polenta, polenta is grit. It is corn, dried, milled, and it's amazing. Um, it's, I would always suggest never buying uh, instant grits. If you have a chance to read the ingredient list on the back of an instant grit package, you're gonna look at probably 30, 40 ingredients. And a lot of them are chemicals. Um, Bob's Red Mill, Bob's Red Mill, excuse me, blah, blah, blah. he makes uh, two different varieties. Um, one is white, one is yellow. Very good quality grits. Um, you can get them at Whole Foods, somewhere else carries them. Um, yeah, use good grits, guys. Don't use bad grits. And remember, low and slow. There you go, someone said, <laughs> instant grit sucks ass. It does, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, real quick, I'm not trying to give you knife steels today. I just want to show you really quickly how to cut an onion. Uh, if you notice, I kept the spine on it. This is the root. I took everything else off and I cut the top of it off. Uh, this is not the end all be all for how you're supposed to cut an onion. I'm just giving you one way, okay? Uh, don't judge me. If you have an issue, at me. Boom. All right. So, I'm let my knife off. I'm grooving to Miss Badu live right now. I hope you guys can hear it. I didn't want to turn it up too loud for the feedback. Oh, somebody want me to impress you with my knife skills. I mean, I no pressure. Uh, I teach knife skills actually at the Gourmandi School. And it's always very interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll start off with my demo and I have 20 people all just looking like this at me. Um, and it's whether it's knife skills or cracking an egg with one hand, it's always a pressure situation, but I always show them and you know, it is what it is, but uh, no pressure. As I sip my wine before I show you my knife skills, I got you, all right. So first we're gonna go about an eighth of an inch up. Boom, again, boom. And I'm cutting it horizontally. I'm not cutting all the way through if you see. So boom, boom, boom. And now if you can see the ridges on the onion go or vertically, I'm going to put my knife vertically with them to kind of follow it. Boom. Now I'm going to turn it and here's my dice. When I was uh, really early in my uh, culinary days, I tried to rush and wipe off my knife, not paying attention to how the angle of my finger. And uh, sure enough, cut my hand and was like, okay, started washing dishes and everything. And then just like, ooh, all right. My hand is hot, what's going on? I looked down, it was just a big, nice little slice. So, uh, and for that, please don't follow the way I did with my knife, but, uh, uh, I'm gonna lead into this. Everyone, you're gonna cut yourself. You're gonna cut yourself. You're gonna cut yourself. It happens. I will say this, I've cut myself several times and when I've cut myself, it's because I was rushing and didn't pay attention. Um, and I wasn't doing the proper technique. So with proper technique and repetition, you will be okay with your knife skills and you won't cut yourself and all that crazy stuff. <laughs> Someone said they like the sound of uh, chopping noises. Uh, funny thing, uh, when I was running uh, this restaurant in uh, Beverly Hills, 
my, my cooks would always be like, yo, you hear everything. How do you do it? Or you see everything. And I was like, bro, uh, I know when you're using improper technique. I know when you're cutting something wrong, I can hear it. It makes a certain sound. Um, and this just comes with, comes with the territory. And it also comes with, you know, cooking for shit damn near 20 years now. So, but yeah. So uh, right now, I'm sweating the onion. It's on a medium high heat. Uh, this is gonna be the base for our red pepper polenta. Um, right now, we're cutting the seeds in the fifth out of, or the insides out of the jalapeno. Booyah. It's where a lot of the heat is, so you wanna make sure you watch that. Um, and I'm not trying to make it too spicy. Um, Feel free, if you want, you can put the whole jalapeno in there, but uh, I know my mother's palate, she likes kind of a balance. Um, if you want spicy, by all means, go ahead and do that. All right, booyah. Hmm. Starting to smell really good in here. Booyah, booyah. All right, jalapenos in, onions in. And we're gonna lightly sweat it. We're not looking to brown this. We're just want to get it. We want color, and we also want kind of to bring out the natural juices and the onions and the jalapenos. All right, we're coming back to remember that red pepper we talked about earlier that I roasted. I'm gonna show you guys how we can peel it. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. If this. Excuse me, if your onions and jalapeno start to brown, turn your fire down a little bit. We're just looking to get that flavor, okay, guys? And so um, I cut half of a, a red pepper, and I, uh, I'm going to throw that in here. The rest of it we're going to reserve for later on so that when we're folding it, we're going to fold it into the polenta. We're going to get that extra flavor. Uh, and so we're going to get three different textures. We're going to have the cooked sauteed peppers here. We're going to have the roasted red pepper that I did earlier. And then we're going to have the semi-raw pepper in the polenta later on. All right. All right. All right. All right. So let's do this. This trash bowl. With the roasted pepper, no, we are not going to keep all of the char. We are going to actually peel that off. And it's very easy. And remember that bowl technique I did a little bit earlier? That's what allowed for me to peel this off with such ease. All right, because we're looking for flavor uh, and smokiness. We're not necessarily looking for black char, okay? So boom. And toss that. And so now we have a perfectly roasted pepper. Oh yeah. Okay. So the seeds are out. Well, no, we're gonna get the seeds out, and we're also gonna kind of cut that up as well. Boom. And we just want to make sure again, we get just like with the jalapeno, we're getting the seeds out and any of the pith. This is gonna be a little bit mushy, so we're not looking for mush, we're just trying to get some of the seeds out. Okay, guys? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Erica is going in right now. How many of you guys watched Versus last night on Instagram? I had Erica Badu and Jill Scott. That's why I'm in this, this Erica Badu mode. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. So now I'm adding the roasted pepper to this mixture. Oh, yeah. It's starting to brown a little bit. Boom. All right. I wish you guys could smell what it smells like in here. I know you can hear it, but right now I'm smelling the onions, the jalapeno, a little bit of the charred pepper. It's all coming together. Um, you know what it's missing? 
Garlic. I'm gonna add some garlic to this bad boy. <clears throat> and thank God I had my shopping bag right next to my feet. TV magic. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. But no, I'm not. So what are you guys doing out? What are you guys out there doing for your mothers today? Can you see your parents? Or are you dropping off food? Are you sending cards? Are you doing something special for the special mother in your life, your wife, all that good stuff? Make sure you give them a hug and a kiss. Make them feel special on this day. Mothers are who make us who we are. They uh, bring us into this world and all that good stuff. Ooh, that smells beautiful. So beautiful, I need to take a pause for the cause. Okay, okay. I see some people are saying they're going to have Zoom meetings with their parents tonight. I feel that. And we should be sending love and light to the, the moms that aren't here as well. And the aunties and, and my good friends, all of my friends that are mothers, strong, beautiful mothers. I'm going to give you guys a shout out. And, yo, I can't lie. I cannot wait to have people over and cook. It's starting to go a little crazy. I'm being serious. <laughs> I want to see my friends. I want to do hood rat things with my friends. I want to cook. I want to entertain. All that good stuff. Um, I miss y'all. And I know y'all miss me. <coughs> One thing. <clears throat> I'm rushing, yeah, I'm cooking live. Uh, you want to make sure, especially when you have a hot oven and vegetables, there will be steam. Uh, so open with caution. It just hit me a little bit, gave me a little bit of a facial. Ain't nothing wrong with a facial, vegetable facial. All right. I'm going to add this garlic to this sauce real quick. Again, I'm letting it kind of come together. Mm -mm -mm. That's a quick smash to get the skin off, for those that know or don't know. I guess I didn't do a great smash because you still got skin on it, but whatever. I'm on the fly right now. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, I, uh, my mother was a great cook. Uh, growing, she's a single parent for a very long period of time. Um, and she actually taught me how to cook, uh, you know, growing up. Uh, I, I got my foundation from my grandmother, but being that my mother was a single parent, she's like, all right, well, when I'm working, you gotta be cooking if you wanna eat. And so um, I thank her for that, but uh, she's also forgot all her recipes with being a great cook. I guess that comes with having a son that's a chef you feel like, well, guess what? He's going to cook it, so I don't have to worry about it. Kind of like dinner today. It works. <laughs> Somebody said they like the knife sound. I do, too. Hit this a little bit. A little bit of rosé. It didn't hurt anybody. No judgy. Make sure, ladies and gentlemen, if you are pouring wine into your food, that you can drink it as well. Don't buy cooking wine and shit like that. Make sure you uh, it tastes good and you can do it. You can drink it and eat it. Or eat with it. Or cook with it. Whatever the hell. Maybe I'll drink too much rosé. Anyways. Alright. So I just deglazed with the rosé. I kicked up the heat a little bit because I want this to kind of come together. And then next, I'm going to blend this mixture. And this is going to be my base for my polenta, AKA grits. All right. Someone said they're uh, really lazy during this time. They don't like cooking, but their dad is cooking. I'm not gonna knock it. For me, especially during these times at first, I was kind of like, well, I'm, I'm still stressing, but I was stressing out. I ain't gonna lie. I had a lot of events that were uh, canceled. 
um, clients that canceled and I didn't know what was going on. And then, um, you know, took a week, maybe two weeks to kind of get my headspace right and figure things out. And after that, I said, well, you know, let's kick these cooking tutorials up. Cooking for me is actually kind of a, um, a stress reliever. Uh, it's, you know, it's been saving me a little bit from in these times, uh, especially baking and things like that. Um, and, you know, I'm an outdoorsman. I like camping and being prepared. So I'm doing shit like making sourdough starters and pickling things just so I can be prepared, exercising that shit. So, yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'm just checking comments, y'all. I'm just checking comments. Are oh, we looking good, y'all? We looking good. Last week I was under time. This week I'm I'm kind of in the right spot. So, all right. Boom. All right, that is done. And so let me move this mic out the way so I don't cut myself in front of all of y'all and try and play it off. So I'm gonna, this is a, this little contraption here is my Ninja Blender. Uh, I'm going to blend all of this up. This is the sauteed onions, uh, the regular chopped red pepper, and then also the chopped roasted red pepper uh, and some garlic. Uh, I think I said jalapeno as well. So all of that is going in there. Boom. Get that pan there. I'm gonna have some dishes tonight. All right, all right, all right. So, with um, with the grits or polenta, with the uh, the ratio says three to one. So that's three parts water to one part grits. So, uh, what that says is I need three parts liquid to one part grit. So three cups of liquid, one cup of grits. Sorry for the noise. I'm in my kitchen. I don't have the full production. So in essence, we are looking for three cups of liquid to one cup of grit. And I already have the grits pre-measured, so we're in the game. Booyah, there's one cup. Right. Boom, boom, boom. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our puree, our roasted red pepper puree. And um, to finish it off, I'm going to jump here and grab some uh, vegetable stock as well. Uh, this is how we're going to start this thing off. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear right now, but... Uh, Call Tyrone is on. And, you know, everybody loves this song. Everybody be acting like Tyrone is the bad person. Tyrone was the, was the friend. He wasn't the, the, the asshole. So for all the Tyrones out there, I got your back. I got y'all back. All right, all right. So they got us about one cup of the roasted red pepper puree. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, we're gonna drop that in the pan. Let's see, I added stock to this cup just to get a little bit more of that out. That's two cups. Uh, ooh. All right. That's three cups. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, I am making a Mother's Day situation for my madre. Right now, I have, uh, we're making a red pepper, uh, roasted red pepper polenta or grits. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, in the pot right now, we have three cups of liquid. We have this one cup of the, the red pepper 
puree. We have two cups of the stock, uh, and we're going to bring that to a boil. I'm going to medium high heat. Um, and we're just going to get that rolling. Uh, once it gets rolling, we're going to cut it down a little bit, and we're going to slowly. Oh shit! There we go. It's starting already. Hold on, baby. Give it a little quick stir. It's a little too quick. <laughs> Quick stir. And once it starts to simmer, we're gonna add our grits. Um, a lot of folks try to rush when they're making their grits. They try to get the, the water boiling and just throw it in there and it's just water and maybe butter, hopefully. Uh, I was always, I came from the school of low and slow, heavy cream, butter. Cause butter makes everything better as my mentor used to say. Uh, so we're gonna add some butter and a little bit of cream to that too after we let it come together. So this is going, we wanna keep our eye on it. We don't want it too hot. We just want it kind of bubbling up a little bit. We're gonna take a peek at our roasted veggies. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, you see how that looks right there? Ooh. So, so far, my radicchio is, is, is good. My Brussels sprouts, they almost there. They almost there. So what I am going to do right now. Uh, 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 uh. See you next lifetime. Y'all don't know I can sing. You don't have to tell me. It's okay. So I'm taking the radicchio off now. It's, it's charred really beautifully. And we don't want to overcook that. Mm. All right. Boom, boom, boom. So charred radicchio is there. All right. So now for the Brussels sprouts. I'm going to spread these bad boys out just a little bit. And we're going to get them to crisp up now. So ladies and gentlemen, you're starting to see the leaves kind of come together. Seeing some of the char, but we want a little bit more. I'm going to pop this in actually uh, a little bit longer before I add my sauce. I don't want it to burn. I want it to be crispy and flavorful, okay? So boom, that's the uh, Brussels sprouts. Let's take a look at these carrots. You can see that. Wish you guys had smell -o vision They're coming together, but they need a little bit more time. We want the uh, the natural sugars in those bad boys to, to, to melt and do their thing. And uh, it's going to caramelize. We want some color. We want some a little bit more of the natural sweetness to come out and all that good stuff. Let me check this. Mm. Smells beautiful. Smells beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. All right, now let's check these potatoes, these patatas. You guys want to see these? All right, oh yeah, oh yeah. Again, ladies and gentlemen, these are Japanese sweet potatoes. Uh, I'm just kind of turning them a little bit. I want them to get a little bit crispy on all sides and even out. You see like this side has a little bit of caramelization on it. That's what I want all the way around. So I'm gonna kind of move that. One thing you wanna do, let's see. I wanna make sure we taste it a little bit, okay? Be careful. I'm probably gonna burn the hell out of my tongue, but it's all for you guys. Um, make sure you taste your food. Okay, okay. I think it needs just a little bit more salt. But they're sweet. The texture on the outside is starting to get very crispy. Um, and we want it just to go a little bit more. It's not gonna be crispy like a, a regular potato. This is Japanese sweet potato. They're a little bit drier, a little bit starchier. So keep that in mind. See you next lifetime. All right. We're on the polenta. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the comments was we don't have, uh, Twitch hasn't built in smell-o-vision, but when we do, we're going to make a lot of money. I wish you guys could smell this. Last week, we did uh, New Orleans-style barbecue shrimp. 
uh, you definitely want to see that video. There's a couple clips on the uh, Twitch channel. And then also I have the recipe up in the full video at thefeast.la. So if you guys want to check that out and uh, try your hand at true New Orleans style uh, barbecue shrimp. All right, ladies and gentlemen, right now I am whisking that those grits, that corn polenta, that oh yeah, into my red pepper mixture and just slowly whisking. I guess I will, I guess I will. So now, and this was about a cup of grits. Again, we talked earlier, ooh, turn that down. We're gonna turn that down. We're gonna get it off the heat a little bit. This is where you gotta go slow, low and slow. If you go too fast, especially with grits, it'll burn your ass. You ever heard of hot grits being poured on somebody? <laughs> Look it up. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. So I'm going to continuously whisk, but I'm also going to turn this down um, to a low simmer because it's, it's, again, this is this is an induction burner. It gets very hot very quickly, and then it's hard to kind of manage it. It's not like a gas heat. Uh, and so, boom, we're going to let that kind of go. I'm going to move that. Woo. Watch that. Move this to the back end. And I'm going to add just a little bit more stock because I want it. I'm, I'm not looking for really thick, hard grits. I'm looking for smooth, creamy. And so I'll let this do it, let it do its thing on the back end at a low heat. And I'm just going to come back to it and whisk it. One thing you want to do is make sure that you whisk through the bottom. You're not looking for uh, the bottom of your pan to stick or, or burn, and, and they can do that. So this is not something that you're going to cook and kind of walk away from. This is something that you're going to sit with for a little bit, keep your eye on it, and actually stay in the kitchen. So for all my cooks that, that like to uh, step away and look at TV or have some herbal refreshment, this ain't it. You gotta kinda keep your eyes on it, all right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So we've already knocked out our roasted vegetables. Uh, the Brussels sprouts are going right now. Um, our radicchio is already out and it's beautiful. Uh, let me taste it, let's see. Oh yeah. Crispy, and that's what I wanted. I wanted it crispy. And here's the other beauty of it. So I'm cooking, I'm taste testing everything, and I have some rosé that I'm probably going to serve with my food. So here's a great time for me to say, hey, ooh, let's see if the wine works with it. It does. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. So checking on these grits. This polenta once more. Make sure you get that workout. It is a workout. And again, this is on low. You don't want it hot. You nothing like getting hot grits on you. Pour it on you. All right, people. So we are coming to the end of everything. All right. Um, we are going to basically broil sockeye salmon. Um, it's just fresh caught. Uh, it's not farmed. Um, there's a lot of information and not enough time for me to actually go into farm versus fresh and the benefits of both because there are benefits and setbacks to both of them. Um, but with this dish, back in the day in college, um, I helped this chef cater an event and this was a dish on the menu and she had balsamic vinegar and she just hit it with uh, a little bit of brown sugar and butter. And I was shocked at how amazing the flavor, oh shit, you got stuff falling out there. Got ghosts. Anyway, um, back to my story. I helped a chef cater this event. She used balsamic vinegar, she used sugar and butter. And it was with salmon. 
I was shocked. I couldn't believe the, 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 the depth of flavor. And I had never had something with balsamic vinegar and sugar with, with something like fish. So that's why, you know, this one stuck with me. Over the years, I've kind of put different variations on it. And I actually forgot about the dish. And then um, last Thanksgiving, my mother, shouts out to mom, said, yo, why don't you make that dish again? And then, uh, all right, yeah, I forgot. She's like, yeah, I really liked it. And so here we are, people. Here we are. Um, I just added a little bit more stock to my grits, my polenta. I want it to be smooth and silky. I don't want it to be super dry and all that good stuff. So hence why I'm at being generous with the liquid. Um, make sure you when you're cooking your grits, ladies and gentlemen, that you put some flavor in there. Don't just cook it with water. Don't just cook it with butter. Add a little bit of salt, add a little bit of pepper. Uh, some people are gonna kind of kill me for this, but I grew up, my uh, my grandfather taught me to eat grits with butter and sugar. And as a kid, anything with butter and sugar was amazing. And so, yeah, I grew up eating grits with butter and sugar. Uh, as an adult, I don't necessarily need butter and sugar in my grits. Um, I appreciate it, but I don't need it. So I am spraying this with nonstick. Have these fish fillets here. Notice I kind of made a little well or a little barrier with the foil in this pan. And that's because when I broil this, the balsamic vinegar will reduce and sometimes it will burn the stick. We're not looking to, to have the pan super uh, sticky with the, the sugars, the natural sugars or anything like that. We're just looking to uh, have easy cleanup and all that good stuff, all right? Oh yeah, the dishes are starting to accumulate. No judgment. All right. So magically, the salmon was already filleted. No, I filleted it earlier. I took the skin off, all that good stuff. Uh, skin, excuse me, skin side down. Uh, make sure you get some of the pin bones out. If you did get a whole salmon, um, if that's not your uh, speed, make sure you ask your uh, fishmonger to uh, fillet it, debone it, all that good stuff. Um, and booyah. That's the steelhead salmon. Again, you notice, I'm coming back to my polenta. Mm -mm -mm. Smells really good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, boom. Check on the veggies. Ooh, it smells good. And I just got another facial. Um, oh, yeah. For our spice rub for the salmon, we're going to try to do it close to a traditional blackening seasoning. Um, I have dried rosemary, cayenne, garlic, and paprika, and sugar. The sugars are gonna help with the browning of the salmon, um, but that's also a place where you wanna make sure you pay attention uh, to your fish while you're cooking it because it can burn quickly because of the natural sugars, or not natural sugars, the actual sugar, excuse me. So about a quarter, uh, quarter cup, excuse me, quarter teaspoon, Definitely not a quarter cup, a uh, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper into, I have a half a cup of sugar. Paprika, another quarter cup. Mm -mm -mm. And then half a teaspoon of rosemary, dried rosemary. All right. Oh, quarter cup of garlic. Booyah, 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 booyah. Uh, uh, uh. I want to know what uh, 
what do you guys what have you guys been cooking during uh these weird times i know a lot of people have had to cook a lot of a lot more meals at home um i know i have uh i know a lot more people are ordering out as well uh, a lot of my friends are telling me at this point they're, they're, they're tired of all of it uh i want to know what you guys are doing out there so leave a comment let us know Uh, 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 okay, I'm just checking out the, the questions we got here. Boom, boom, boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. Spice mix is popping. I have the cayenne pepper. It's, 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 it's popping. Let me back up off it real quick. I had to back up off of it and sit my cup down. Y'all remember that song? Anyway, <clears throat> spice mix. We're about to add the spice mix. Um, I'm just cleansing my palate with the rosé, rosé, rosé all day, Sunday. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Shout out for Stimulus TV. Thank you guys for having me. Another Sunday in the books. We're getting there, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Saul Bay ain't got shit on me. <laughs> Just going to go high with this little mixture. Um, you don't want to go low. Uh, you don't want a spice bomb or anything like that. Uh, that goes for salt. That goes for pepper. We're never, you never want to go low. You always want to go high. Shouts out Michelle Obama. <laughs> All right. And you want to get an even distribution of the seasoning. And that's what I'm doing now. Just a little bit of everything all on it, baby. Uh, uh, uh. I'm rocking out with Erica Badu right now, guys. Thank you guys for joining us today. I want to definitely, you know, you guys are appreciated. Any donations are very appreciated as well. It's going to a good, good, uh, good purpose, especially in these weird, uncertain times. All right. So I got my spice mix. I'm coming back to my polenta because I don't want it to stick at the bottom. And I'm whisking it. Hopefully that's not too much noise for y'all. All right. Now we're at the point I can add my milk or heavy cream. I like the creaminess. I'm gonna add butter later, but this is this is just you know, this is about half a cup. If you're lactose, you don't have to. This is just me adding a little extra and getting a little froggish in there, all right? Boom. Mm -mm -mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. I know you're getting tired of seeing me. I hope not, but we've been there for a minute. All right, boom. So these carrots look like they're ready to go. You see that? Smell of vision. There you go. There you go. Let's. Uh, we're gonna pop those over here. Oh. oh shit, my music went off. I gotta find something else to play. Can't mess up the vibes. Can't mess up the vibes. All right, so our carrots are done. They look beautiful. I'm whisking this for It's starting to speak to me. You don't want it to speak to you because if it starts to speak to you, i.e., pop, it might pop out at you. So be careful, guys. All right. Brussels sprouts. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The char. Remember we told you about the, the opening of the leaves? That's what I wanted. So, really quickly, so you guys can see it. Let me do that. Whew. All right, Brussels sprouts. And this is just a quick little extra thing thing I like to do in this situation. I probably should have been set up already for you guys. Please bear with me for a second. But I am literally going to put sesame oil and a little bit of oyster sauce 
on top of my Brussels sprouts and throw it back in for a hot second. This is going to give me a little bit of flavor, a little bit of oomph. Eh. It's different, so bear with me. Oh, uh, one critique my mother gave me. She said I shouldn't be tasting. So I love you, mom. All right. So, booyah. A little oyster sauce. A little bit of sesame oil. Drizzled on top. I'll whisk this again because it's starting to come together. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of these red peppers. Just throw them in there. Because, again, this is a red pepper or roasted red pepper polenta. So we want some color in there as well. Cool. All right. So Brussels sprouts, sesame oil. You hear that? That crisp? That's what we're looking for, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to pop this back in, and we're good to go. It smells amazing in here want you to know I'm going to be cleaning up dishes for two weeks. But it's cool because it's for you, mama. All right. Boom. Roasted Japanese sweet potatoes. They are good to go. And so we'll go ahead and throw those bad boys on here. So right now on our vegetable platter, we have radicchio, we have roasted carrots, and we have roasted Japanese sweet potatoes. And the last thing we're going to add is the squash. All right. Our polenta is rocking. Um, right now, give that one more whirl. Booyah. We already have our seasoning mix. Um, I'm going to take that blood orange that we talked about earlier. I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of the blood orange juice on top. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of uh, a little extra flavor. If I was really prepared, I would have already had a squeeze for you, but I knew you guys wanted to see me do this, so. No, Daddy. All right, but yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Balsamic vinegar. You can do a healthy amount. I'm not looking to pour it directly on top. I'm looking to pour it around the salmon. All right. Boom, boom, boom. And last but not least, butter. We're going to put a little bit of butter on it, okay? We're going to put some butter on it, all right? Starting to smell my vegetables. So I want to make sure I get them out before they burn. And you guys judge me and talk all kind of mess. Booyah. Brussels sprouts. These Brussels sprouts, again, they were roasted, crispy. I took the cores out, and then I threw a little bit of sesame oil and oyster sauce on it, just to give it a different flavor. The radicchio, I just gave it salt and pepper, a little olive oil. The carrots, a little bit of uh, herb on those. And then the Japanese sweet potatoes, I did a uh, little bit of lemon pepper oil. All right, so, boom. I turned my oven to broil because we were about to broil our fish. Mm -mm, let's see, what else we gonna listen to? Oh, let's see, okay, R&B Now Radio. Let's see what you got. I'll wait for that to come on. We're gonna cut our butter. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Okay, you cut off. There we go. And it's Drake for your mood music on Mother's Day Sunday. Oh, yeah. I'm just cutting a small sliver of butter. Um, if you're one of those folks that don't like butter, it's okay. You don't have to put butter on here, but uh, that added little extra oomph I find with this recipe is, is beautiful. Um, so you use olive oil, you can do all that, but butter makes everything better from the person that's showing you how to make the dish. All right. Booyah. So butter, our seasoning, cracked pepper. What the hell is that? Oh. Sorry, guys, I'm listening to the wrong radio station. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back to R&B now on Apple Music. Someone said the salmon is luscious. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, bright red. Uh, sockeye salmon, wild caught, all that good stuff. Uh, I have my seasoning mix on there. I did not hit it with salt, so we're going to do that real quick. Boom. I'm not trying to go crazy with the salt. This is sea salt. It has a higher salinity than the other salt that I have. And the only reason I know that is because I know the salt. Not every salt is made the same. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Whew, smoky. It lets me know I'm ready to broil this salmon. All right. It's in that balsamic bath. It's about to broil. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lot of folks will ask me, how long do I keep it in there? Um, it's done when it's done. Um, I know that's not a really good answer, but uh, that makes you actually check the food. Um, you don't want to go too much. Again, it's in the broiler. It's spicy. It's, I mean, it's it's super hot. <laughs> not spicy, super hot. And um, we're not trying to burn the salmon, and it also has sugar in the spice mix, so we want to be mindful of those those different things. Um, it's almost time to plate up, guys. We're almost there. I talked to you guys for about an hour and some change now. Please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. Love you guys. Thank you guys for checking in with us today. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Oh. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for rocking with me. We're just waiting on the salmon, which is broiling right now. Um, I'm uh, plating up these uh, roasted veggies. Just to give it a little green onion situation really quickly. Just for color and a little bit of flavor. We're going to finish this off with a little bit of green onion, uh, a little bit of salt. Maybe not too much because it, it, it tastes good. Let's see. You don't need too much salt. Mm -mm -mm. Beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. A little bit of green onion action here for the veggies. Mm -mm -mm. Got to check on them a little bit. We're looking good. We're looking good. So if you guys have been checking in, you've seen and been whisking the shit out of this polenta, you want to make sure it doesn't get lumpy, guys. You don't want, there's nothing worse than lumpy polenta, lumpy grits, all that good stuff. So right now it's really smooth, all that good stuff. Uh, we want to make sure we taste it. Mm. All right, all right, all right. We're getting there. So now, we add a little bit of salt to that because we want some flavor. You can be generous with the salt from a pepper mill. Mm 
Mm-mm. Everything's coming together, ladies and gentlemen. You can smell what's going on in this kitchen right now. Mm. I wish I could invite you to come clean up the kitchen and not feed you, but we're uh, social distancing, so this will work. <laughs> I can't wait to see the final product either. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, that's right. The fish is going. Mm -mm. I hit that with a little bit of. Good olive oil. Make sure you put that on there. Um, I tasted some of the veggies already. We don't need to go heavy with any more salt. So we're going to leave that there. I'm seeing right now, you can't really see too much. Let me uh, the roasted veggies. We have the, the roasted radicchio, heirloom carrots, Japanese sweet potato, and then the Brussels sprouts that we roasted and hit it off with a little bit of oyster sauce, just in case uh, you guys were just checking in and can't really see it. Okay. Whew. Wash these hands real quick. Wash these hands, okay. We're getting close to that time, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting close to that time. I'm glad you guys checked in with me. Ooh, I wish you guys could see and just smell. This salmon is ridiculous. Um, quick note. Uh, there's a bunch of folks that like salmon really well done. Um, there's another school of, or group of folks that like undercooked. Um, you you want to kind of test the texture of it. Um, if it's go straight down and it's mushy, it's it's uh, it's a little on the undercooked side. If it's solid, it's on the oh, it's it's more on the well cooked side. Also, when salmon starts to leach out a lot of its liquid or its oil, it'll release a, a white film. Um, that's a good indicator that you're pretty much close to being done. Um, so I'm not gonna to, to jump to either way. I like my salmon kind of medium. Um, it's up to you. <laughs> Someone said the chef isn't supposed to clean. That's true. <laughs> that works in the commercial kitchen. They don't work at home. <laughs> Teamwork make a dream work. Anyway, all right, all right, all right. We're almost there, ladies and gentlemen. We have the roasted veggies. I'm going to pour myself some more rosé. Again, shout out to Le Fet. Le Fet, Le Fit, rosé. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. All right. This salmon is smelling amazing. Ooh, and it's bubbling, so I'm gonna let it chill for two seconds. We got that. Get something to make this up with. Mm. How many of you guys dance when you cook? I dance when I cook and I dance when I eat, especially if the food is good. Uh, Folks always are like, so what are you thinking when you when we go out and eat? If you see me sitting there just rocking and I'm eating, I'm like, oh, this is some good shit. I'm with it. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Getting in the home stretch. Let's see how this salmon looks. <coughs> One thing. <clears throat> because this is broiled and because there's balsamic vinegar, it is going to put out a very strong fragrance when you open the oven. So please be mindful of that because it can get you, all right? <clears throat> Ooh. Booyah. And that's our salmon, ladies and gentlemen. Beautifully seared. <clears throat> Damn. The balsamic is still very strong with it. That's a good thing. The crazy thing about this recipe, yes, you like, okay, balsamic vinegar, that's a little bit strong. It's making you choke. You actually don't even smell it. It's kind of like an afterthought when you, when you plate it up with this dish. So keep that in mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the end of this Mother's Day Sunday dish. 
And I appreciate again you rocking with me. We're about to plate this bad boy up. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. So we got our red pepper polenta, also known as grits. Trying to be cute. I'm trying to be cute. You know, I'm trying to make the plate look good. All right, baby. Boom. All right. So that's the grits. This beautiful salmon. <clears throat> Wish you guys could smell this right now. All right. All right. All right. Hit you off with some purple carrots, a little bit of yellow situation. I'm gonna take some of this radicchio, tuck them in here a little bit. Booyah. Brussels. And a little bit of this roasted pepper. Oh, excuse me, roasted sweet potato. And so for the end of it, I pickled a little bit of uh, shallot. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of rice wine vinegar and um, sesame oil. If you have it, do it. If not, no biggie. But this is kind of give a little bit of balance to, you know, we had a lot of butter. It's very rich. Just going to put that on top. Oh, yeah. Boom. And if we're feeling froggish, a little bit of that green onion that we had earlier. Throw it on there. And booyah, ladies and gentlemen, this is the salmon dish for Mother's Day that I made for my mama. So, all right. I hope you guys can, I'm going, excuse me. <clears throat> I will post this video and recipe later at thefeast.la. Um, make sure you guys check out every Sunday. We're going to be doing these type of uh, recipes and more on a Stimulus TV. Uh, make sure you check out the Feast LA, which is my company and website. I'm also the Gumbo Pot Podcast. And uh, to all the mamas, mama, happy Mother's Day. Stimulus TV, thank you again for having me. Thank you guys for joining me in my kitchen. Uh, again, this is Nigel, Nigel with the knife, signing off. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah.